All right. Well, we are here. We have an esteemed guest. I know we we talked about this, but we we really need to get into this. This guy has done voices for. Uh, geez, where do I start? Uh, well, he's Rainer. He's Rainer from StarCraft. He's also uh, been uh, he's been the voice of tons of different things. We're going to get into all of it. Uh, the biggest thing that I was a big big, big fan of is Ancient Aliens. I know it's not a video <laughs> game, but I don't care. Uh, it, Robert Clotworthy on the show. Robert, how you doing, man? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that you're a fan of Ancient Aliens and of uh, StarCraft because those, those are two fun gigs that I do that have lasted a hell of a long time. How about that? How man, about that? I mean, StarCraft in 98 and Ancient Aliens were in our just finished our what thirteenth season. Is it thirteen now? Oh man, yeah, thirteen. Wow. Yeah, 13. I think you need to up, upgrade your uh, or your website. <laughs> update your website there. I, I have to because it's <laughs> I, 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 it's like a hundred like pilot episode, some odd episodes. It's crazy. Wow. So yeah, we're uh, that's it, great. And it shows it shows no sign of, of slow, slowing down. So I'm very happy. So do you know. I have a real question about that? Mm -hmm. A quick question. Um, do you believe? in in that stuff mm. well i'll tell you i answer it this way because my job as the narrator of the show is to ask the questions i ask the questions is it possible could it be so i have to my attitude and i approach everything that i do even if it's narration as an actor i think um what is a how do i serve the script what's my my job here and in this my job is not to offer my opinion my job is to be an interested uh, observer and somebody who wants to know, who, who is seeking the answers. So personally, what I try to do is not make a decision as to whether I believe in it or don't believe in it, because if I believed in it, then I'd be uh, you know, preaching it. If I didn't believe right. in it, it would come across as me being a skeptic, and I don't want to do that. So I, I'm more... In the, in the audience's shoes. I'm sitting with the audience. And when whenever I get a script, I don't like to see it ahead of time. I don't read it in advance. They don't send it to me. When I show up in the recording studio, they hand me the script. That's the first time I've seen it. So when I'm saying the words, it's basically the first time I've ever seen them. Oh, wow. And I allow that natural curiosity or interest that I have towards the, uh, the information that I'm passing along to, to guide me. So that's why when I'm saying, is it possible, I really am asking the question. And oftentimes in that show, there's so much amazing information that's that's thrown at you. Because, first of all, uh, with the show, if there's a, a, a factual statement made, you know, for example, in you know, 1776, uh, this, this or that happened, we make sure that that really did happen in 1776. Mm -hmm. In fact, I've I had somebody that tweeted a... Uh, a mistake that was in one of the shows where we talked about something that uh, we, we mentioned, we said, I think it was mica or whatever, that, that it conducted electricity when actually it's an insulator. So I happened to mention that to one of the producers and they went back to their credit and changed the episode. Oh, wow. So, wow. so that they, cause they didn't, they don't want anything that's inaccurate to go out there. Right. So I find that in, Every episode, there's something that's really fascinating, something that's really compelling, something that's really interesting uh, that, that, that draws me to it. And then I just try to convey that natural interest that I have as the, uh, as the narrator. And hopefully that kind of piques your interest as a, as a listener and a viewer. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, and, and, okay. and actually, I, have, I did encounter or did meet with somebody at a convention not too long ago who... Uh, told me a firsthand account of their experience with uh let's just say some unexplained mm. out of this world in space phenomena that uh is very difficult for anybody to to question and uh hopefully we'll be addressing that particular um story in an upcoming episode interesting wow. Do you know? Do you, you you know how many episodes are coming? Do you know that there's more? Do you, do you is there? Do you have like a con, a year contract? How does that work? How do they, like? Uh, you know, I I find out pretty much almost uh, uh, when you guys do. Okay. Uh, you know, I may have like some some inside scoop as to what is happening behind the scenes, but as far as official announcements. Uh, let's let's put it to you this way. There's there's been no official announcement, but from the History Channel, but there is going to be 
a uh, an event coming up next June called Alien Con in Pasadena, uh, mm-hmm. which let's let's face it, it's that's what nine months away, yep. and it's sponsored by History Channel, and it's going to be a a big deal because it basically focuses just on ancient aliens. It's a convention just for ancient aliens. We did it. We did the first one up in Santa Clara, California in October of last year. And it was a huge success. Uh, we had people fly in from all over the country to, to come to the event. And uh, one panel had over 2,500 people wow. that sat there and listened. And it was fascinating. So, uh, and that was just, I mean, it caught everybody by surprise. Who, who knew that the show was, was that popular and would command that kind of interest in, uh, from the fans? So I'm looking forward to the, uh, the convention in June. That's going to be really exciting. I hope you guys can, can come out to it or be a part of it. Yeah, it's, uh, that, that, it sounds really fun. Uh, please tell me that Georgia will be there. Of course Georgia is going to be there. <laughs> Georgia is going to be there. And Eric Von Daniken is going to be there. Okay. Everyone is going to be there. All the uh, the stars of the show wow. are going to be there. I hope to get an invite. I I, I think I probably will, <laughs> and uh, and be a part of it. Now I, I'm sure I'll be there, and cool. it's going to be a three day love fest. It's going to be fascinating. <laughs> it's really going to be cool. Well, that's great. Congratulations. That it, yeah. it, that's just one of those cool things that you could put up. Like, man, that's. Wow. Yeah, it's that's, it was almost it was, a career of work in one job. <laughs> well, yeah, and I've had two of those. I mean, Ancient Aliens has gone on what 10, 12 years, however long we've been doing it. Right. And uh StarCraft has been going on since 1997, I think is when I started recording it. Yeah. And uh Blizzard just celebrated their what 25th anniversary and I realized I've been working with them for like 21 or 22 of those 25 years. So well, it's amazing. It's, it's it's really a, a lot of fun. I'm really I'm really grateful and very very thankful for the gigs. Actually, let's get in. Let's get into Starcraft. I think I okay. think we should just go okay. there right now. Okay. Uh, okay. Verlaine Verlaine's not into Starcraft, but he is into uh, okay. Heroes of the Storm. By the way, I'm going to show you something that I just I was got at. Uh, can you read that? BlizzCon. Oh, the BlizzCon. My BlizzCon uh, water bottle that came from. Uh, the last BlizzCon, they. Uh, oh, that's cool. That's that, awesome. Yeah. See, 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 you take a, a token of their appreciation. If you want. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I'm an actor. I'll take whatever I, you know, oh, it's not yeah. nailed down. You know, I'll go to craft services and just chow down. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, look, Rainer, uh, I, I, I grew up playing the first StarCraft. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, it bled over to the StarCraft mm-hmm. Two, and it's been a juggernaut ever since uh when it comes to esports when it comes to uh pretty much any, anything that there is uh blizzard itself is is an amazing company i i, I think yeah. you should know how uh how they are with gamers because i don't know i don't know how many gamers you talk to uh I, i've i've millions. met one or two <laughs> okay well well coming from us let me tell you that yeah. when it comes to blizzard uh they're that company they're the trustworthy company mm, when, when you when they come when they come out with a new product you know it's going to be quality uh mm-hmm. you know uh they they're just there uh it's, we always talk about uh the game overwatch on the show mm-hmm. uh, of course you know along with every other blizzard but i mean we we play so many blizzard games so it, it's it's got to be cool working for a company like that um there's got to be a lot of secrecy that goes into it as well when, mm-hmm. when it comes to that what type of secrecy is there uh, when you're voicing a new actor like 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 Rainer, let's just put Rainer in, in there. Well, you know, you know, obviously, you know, the uh, the video game biz is a really big business, yep. uh, and the, a lot of money is invested in these games. Uh, it takes years for a game from you know when it's first thought of to when it when it comes out, and uh, it's very important for the company to uh, protect that information because once it's out it's out and then it kind of dilutes the product a little bit and one of the nice things about working with blizzard is that they don't release the game until they feel that it's ready they don't have a date that you know august 3rd you know 2018 we're releasing starcraft 95 whatever the heck it is (laughs) they don't have they don't have a date set and i'm not saying there is a starcraft 95 95. Yeah, are you saying something? <laughs> but but um, 
so, and even when we go into the to the studio and record we're aware of that as actors so the pressure is not on for us to kind of get it just get it done just because we have to meet a, a, a deadline the focus is on getting it done right and the quality of the work so we take our time and uh it's from every from people at the top to you know i don't want to say the people at the bottom but the people that aren't at the top uh, everybody has the same attitude and they're all a joy to work with. They really enjoy their gig. I mean, it's it's not a not a uh, a company that's easy to to get a job with because everybody wants to work with them, and so everybody that's there that I've met has been incredibly thankful that they're there. Now, as far as the secrecy is concerned, yeah, the, we all sign basically non disclosures that we're not going to talk about the game. We're not going to unless we have approval. Um, if, uh, if if something pops up, if I'm doing an interview or, or whatever, I may send a uh, an email to the, to the people at Blizzard and say, hey, what can I talk about? What can't I talk about? And they're very good about, about letting you know. Um, so it's it, it's important. You know, it's, it's interesting because as an actor, you have to have what they call a social media footprint. I mean, people yeah. get gigs, lose gigs because they don't have or they have, you know, the, the amount of Twitter followers they have or Instagram or whatever the heck it is. So unfortunately, as an actor, you have to kind of work that a little bit. And part of working it is giving people a, a peek behind the curtain and letting them know what's what's going on so they feel like they're getting like the inside scoop. But you have to be very careful that you're not putting out information that is uh, counterproductive to the success of the game. I mean, I recently worked on, I'll put it to you this way, one of the biggest games of all time and the sequel to that game. And it's not going to come out till maybe 2019 is what I was told, which is mm. like, you know, a year and a half away, maybe 2018, but probably 2019. Can't talk about it. Ugh. Um, it's, <laughs> it's huge you are, but it's, but it's, great, but it's though. huge. It's really big. And I'm really excited about it. And I can't wait to when, when, uh, it's finally announced, uh, that I, that I can talk about it. Well, it's you're going to have to come back on the show whenever. <laughs> giant oh, we'll, we'll book thing. it now. Let's see. Let's see. I'm going to check my calendar. I'm free in, uh, well, I'm all 2019 is wide okay, open at this good. point. Well, so well, we're good. Good. You're in the calendar. <laughs> <laughs> go, Billy, go ahead. Okay. Well, so you've been doing voice work for a long, long time. Yeah, yeah. What is your favorite genre to do? I mean, you you do the video games, you do some some movie appearances, but I see mm -hmm. a lot of narration jobs, and yeah. it, for me, that I, I don't know. When I think about it, it seems like it would be on the bottom of my list of of wants. What, you know, it's, do you it's interesting. I have, I have a slightly different philosophy because uh, I'm one of those people that believes you need to walk through the door that's opened. You can right. spend your life knocking on a door and, you know, maybe it's movie star. Hello, I want to be a movie star. Hello, anybody there? I want to be a movie star. The door's not opening. Uh, whereas the door that says, hey, we need you as a narrator. Come, come on in. Come on. You, you want to narrate? Come on. Come on. Come on. And people go, uh, I want to be the movie star. And they they miss the opportunities. And so I have faith in that whatever I is, you know, comes around, comes around for a reason. And do I have the courage to to do that? Um, and with with narration, I didn't start out thinking, wow, I want to want to narrate. I know that as a kid, I used to love reading out loud. Even with with girlfriends, I would uh, you know read read stories to them, read books. Yes, yeah, I sound really <laughs> like a, a ton of fun on a Friday night, right? <laughs> but but it was it was, and I would challenge myself. I would read a book, and I would see if I could read it out loud and have an attitude and have a, a point of view, without knowing where I was going with it. You know, could I kind of anticipate where the story was going a little bit? So it was just a, for me, it was just fun, and. Uh, when I got with a with a new agency, I guess this was, oh my God, 15 years ago or whatever. I was thinking, what was nice about moving to a new agency? It's like moving to a new town. <laughs> you you get to reinvent yourself. You're not carrying any yeah. old baggage with you. Nobody knows who you are. Nobody knows what your past is. You can be you can be whatever you want to be. 
uh, they give you the opportunity. And one of the things that I thought I would like to do, I thought, you know, I'd like to give narration a stab. So I put together a, on my own, just a, a demo reel of a couple little things. I had like a, uh, there was like a Woody Allen story that I liked, and I read a little bit of that. I thought, okay, that's a that's a comedic one, and here's a little something with a little bit of drama. I even wrote something of my own just to have a little taste of it out there. And I put it up, my gave it to my agent. They put it up on their website, and then maybe I don't know, it was like like a few weeks later, I get a phone call from the agent. They say, uh, uh, "You're they want to hire you to voice this documentary." about the making of Star Wars. And it's it's gonna be part of the re-release of the original trilogy on DVD for the first time. Wow. And it's a very prestigious job. Uh, they're sending your, your, your demo up to George Lucas. He has to prove it, you know, George Lucas proved it. And I thought, wow, and it was a really, it was a great paying gig. It was like insane, <laughs> it was an insane amount of money. Just having the and, name George Lucas in that. Yeah, it, it, yeah. And, I'm thinking, and I'm thinking, wow, it, you know, so what I often do when I, when you show up for the first time working with, with somebody new that you've auditioned for, you, uh, I, I like to ask them, why did you hire me? Because there's a lot of actors out there, a lot of people audition. Everybody at the in the professional ranks is generally pretty darn good. They can throw a dart and at, at, a, at a board of, of audition tapes and whoever they, whoever it hits is going to do a good job. And uh, in my, my fantasy was that it played out like this is that, you know, they call up and they say, yeah, yeah we're looking for a narrator. And the agent says something like, Oh man, you gotta, you gotta go for this kid, Bob Claw with it. The, the kid's fantastic. He's great. <laughs> uh, you know, you, you know that they, they would really push yeah. you hard. Well, I got the first part, right. The part where they called up and said, we're looking for a narrator. <laughs> what, the, what the agent then said was, well, why don't you go to our website, listen to the demos of narrators and see who you like. And I thought, interesting. So I then went to the website of my agency. And I don't know if you guys have ever done this. You ever go, go to a thing called um, um, Voice Bank where it has all the agencies are there and, and everybody that's got a demo is listed and they'll, you'll go to say XYZ agency and there'll be a category that says commercial men. Okay. And, okay. and it'll be this huge long list. And then you'll go to the same agency. It'll say, uh, um, you know, promo men. And the list goes down to here. And then, then you have the next one is like uh, uh, trailers and it goes down to here, what, whatever it is, uh, you know, or animation. It's an even smaller list. And then I finally went to the to the the narration category in my agency. And there was like five people. Oh, wow. and I thought, wait a minute, five people. It's not like there's only five people that can do narration. Just about everybody on that commercial list can probably do it. But I realized I was one of the few people that actually was proactive enough to put together a demo to put it out there. So all of a sudden I was in the select group that I had no idea I was in a select group of. <laughs> I thought I didn't realize there was only five of us. I thought there was like I don't know, 105 of us. Sure. And so uh, it, it taught me a couple of lessons. A, uh, be proactive because, you know, you, nothing ventured, nothing gained. And number two, it was an opportunity that opened up and those, those people that did that star Wars documentary are the people I'm still working for. Those are the ones that, that are doing ancient aliens. Those are the ones that are doing curse of Oak Island. I've gotten, you know, hundreds of hours of television narration off of that dumb little demo that I put together. That's awesome. <laughs> Because now I'm there, you know, I'm the, I'm now the producer's good luck charm. He doesn't want to do, he's worried about doing any show that doesn't have my voice in it because everything we touch tends to, uh, to work out pretty well. well that's good for you. Yeah, I would say yeah it's, it's, it's real good for me. So, so, so to answer your question, what do I like the most? You know, I, I like to work. Uh, and, and as an actor, it's, I'm appreciative of, of, of the gig. So doing the narration, it's challenging, but it's, 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 it's the regular gig. And it's and it's fun and it's nice to have a job that lasts a long time. As far as an actor is concerned, it's uh, you know I've I've worked on on television shows, I've worked in movies, working with with Clint Eastwood and, and Bradley Cooper in uh, in American Sniper was was you know, it, it doesn't get better than that mm -hmm. because you're dealing with people at the top of their game yeah. 
And the way that we did that scene, for example, was uh, was unlike uh, a, a lot of films. You usually have, well, you know, always you have a script. In that one, they basically threw the script away for that scene and said, we want you guys to improvise this. We, we have points that we want you to, to touch on in the scene that we weren't able to articulate in the rest of the movie. This would be a great place to do that. And so I, you know, in working with Bradley, who is so, he's so good hmm. that you just had, it was, even though it was kind of scary because, or I don't want to say intimidating, but maybe it was because you walk into, into the room and you, I hadn't met. Clint Eastwood before I hadn't met Bradley Cooper before all of a sudden I'm in a small room with a camera and Bradley Cooper sitting across from me and, and Clint Eastwood is sitting over there. That's it. <laughs> this is just the three of us, three of us and, and the camera guy and they're going, okay, let's go. And, and you know, and, and, and actually Clint doesn't say action. Oh. He said, he says, get off my lawn. <laughs> he says, I can't remember if I got six bullets or five. Uh, he says, he says, go and stop oh, very la very laid back that's fair and, that's and fair. so even though it was kind of intimidating at the beginning it was the probably the easiest job i'd ever done because all i had to do was be present was to be there was yeah. to listen and react and bradley and i we never stepped on each other's lines we, even though we didn't know what those lines were <laughs> it, was, it was just that's a conversation cool. that we were having Great. and and afterwards i was talking with the uh the writer of the of the script, the screenplay, and I said, you know, that scene would make a great trailer, and damn if it didn't turn out to be the trailer <laughs> for the movie, because awesome. they because we were every question that I was asking, I mean, you know, I thought about it ahead of time was was very um, precise. You know, if you're if you're going to a therapist, they're not going to say, so you know, what are you thinking about? Uh, no, it's going to be, let's talk about your mother. Yeah. Right. Did you call her? You know, it's going to be like, uh, you know, you're going to put somebody on uh, on the spot. So my job as the therapist in the scene was to put Bradley on the spot to kind of throw him off a little bit. And so that he couldn't couldn't lie to know that I I had him figured out. And he as the actor, his job was just to be uncomfortable. I mean, he was going, this guy sees right through me. I can't bullshit him. And what do I do now? What's going to happen? And, uh, you know, and, it, and I knew that it was a, a pivotal moment in the movie because this is where he makes a, either a right turn or a left turn. And so with that in mind, that, that added, uh, uh, you know, a, an extra level of, of, of gravitas to the scene, importance to it. So right. that doesn't get much better than that. Doing a video game is, is exciting because you, uh, you don't have to be yourself. Um, being, you know... When people meet me and they go, oh, you're, you're Jim Rayner. And I, I go, yeah, I know. There's there's a, <laughs> often a cognitive disconnect when you see that picture of Rayner uh, and then you see me in person. You I'm, in, I, I'm, I'm in such better shape. Right. <laughs> Do you use the voice when someone asks you that? Like you just kind of go into it or? Some things are just worth fighting for. <laughs> See that? There we go. <laughs> yeah, of, co of, of course. I mean, so it's it's fun to do, and I and I, and you just you just fall into it. It's like putting on a on your on a favorite shirt because I've been doing it for so long. It's easy to kind of kind of get into him, and he is a big part of me. It's not like I'm, you know, uh, schizophrenic, and all of a sudden I you know adapt a adopt a different personality. So, but but what I like about video games is that you're not limited by what you look like. You can be anything. You can be, you know, you if they're looking for the voice of of an animated bottle, why not? Why not you? You could do it. You, you know, it's just a matter of of finding that, and and so it's and plus you get to play scenes, so that's that's exciting. That's interesting as an actor. Uh, oftentimes, if you're just a day player, uh, doing you know guest spots on TV gigs, it's a lot of you know the scenes are not that big. They're not. They're not. There's not a lot of stuff going on. It's a lot of Oftentimes, I call them the, the they went that away type roles. Yeah. Where it's like, uh, which way do you go? Uh, that way. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Okay, sign out. Sign your contract. And you're going, hey, I'm good. Thanks. Um, so, to, so, so to be honest with you, I like all aspects of the business. And whatever gig I'm working on that day is my favorite job. Your favorite job. Yeah. <laughs> I like yeah. that. 
No, that's cool. That's good. Uh, well, since we got you on, uh, I know this is something that you're kind of a part of in a way. Uh, you're, you're part of the Street Screen Actors Guild, American Federation of Television and Radio Artists, uh, SAG-AFTRA, in other words. Yep. I've, uh, been a, I've been a member since 1901. Uh, but yeah okay right yeah it's been, it's been a long time i actually yeah. i actually became a member when i was still in high school so it's been, oh okay well, fair enough. it's been what five years now so Something yeah. like that yeah yeah congratulations on your fifth year in the thing. uh <laughs> so uh last october uh there was a video voice actor strike video game yep. voice actor strike yep. yep and uh it really kind of there was a lot of waves throughout because you know we we kind of just got over the uh the writer's strike Mm -hmm. uh, you know before that so then this kind of happened uh and uh actually just today uh, or um actually well la we talked about this last week on the show uh but i wanted to get kind of get your um your opinion on it uh, apparently it's coming it, it's ending the strike is ending yeah uh, that's, yeah it's uh it's, it's, it's been for you <laughs> it's it's yeah it's, it's it's always good news um uh because obviously when you're on strike everybody loses yeah and um you know, I have my own personal opinion as to whether they should have gone on strike or we should have gone on strike or not. My personal opinion is I, what, what they were asking for. I mean, working with the um, working on video games, you get to talk to the developers. You get to talk to the people that work, you know, for example, at Blizzard or whatever the gaming company is. And they become, you know, you become friendly with them and you understand what their mentality is. And their mentality is oftentimes, I don't want to say at odds with what an actor is is desiring of, um, but it's it's a it's a it's a business, and uh, the business side of it is really important. And I don't think that the actors fully understand the business side. The actors are oftentimes, you know, more emotional when it comes to negotiations than they should be. And I think that oftentimes it's counterproductive for actors because you get a, uh, a, a feel good moment. And then in the long run, you realize that that feel good moment was just a moment. The yeah. other side really got a better deal, but you felt good for that five minutes. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I'm happy that, that it's over. It didn't really, for me, me personally, I didn't notice a big slowdown in the amount of work that was coming through as far as video games were concerned, because a lot of these jobs, like, for example, StarCraft, those were grandfathered or Heroes of the Storm uh, that were uh, before the strike. And so they were able to continue those. And they okay. also Blizzard was not one of the companies that was uh, the strike was focused on. Um, yeah, it was, was what Disney uh, Activision. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it was like Disney Activision. It was like Warner Brothers games. I mean, yeah. I, can't, I can't remember what it was. But uh, you know, I had a conversation with not one of my agents, but another agent, uh, who her in her opinion, she thought it was going to go five years, mm. because she thought it's going to take five years for those grandfathered games to have been finished and done, and then there's a whole new batch of games coming in. That's where they're going to need actors again. But I'm I'm thankful that. Uh, that it that it's over from what i read it doesn't look like you know the actors are going to make a gazillion dollars off of this but uh you know when you're asking for residuals and i think eventually hopefully it would be nice sure I'll, listen i get residuals i think it's i think it's, I think it's terrific yeah but but it, it takes a while for that mentality to um uh work into where the game producers think that it's it's a value okay. uh, you know it was it's only been it hasn't been that many years that the video games started using SAG after actors. So it's a fairly new concept. And I know that from personal experience, there was a certain amount, I'm not saying what companies, there was a certain amount of, uh, I don't want to say resentment, but there was, uh, uh, you know, a lot of the developers saw the actors as coming in at the, at the last, you know, at the end, and they're the ones that get all, all, right. all the glory, all the glory, where the people that have been been doing the the work in the trenches for years, are somewhat ignored. So the the companies have a, have started to understand that there is value to the actors. That yeah, we do come in at the end, but what we add to it is something that 
uh, is, is, is very, is very unique. People enjoy the game, listen to the game, will buy the game because of the person that's the voice. I mean, with, with me personally, as, as Rainer, I can't tell you how many people have come up to me and say, you're the guy, man. If, if it was somebody else, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have played it. You know, whatever it might've been. I don't know whether they're, whether there was just emotional or not, but the, the, the business has changed to where the, the acting is, is more critical. Early video games, it didn't matter what, right. what you could hire Absolutely. the guy that was sweeping the floors to come into a voice because it was all about the game. Now it's a little bit more of a, uh, uh, of, of an experience for people. When I, when I talk to people who are, who are gamers, they say with Starcraft, for example, number one, it was the gameplay. Number two, it was the story. And number three, it was the, the community that, uh, that they became a part of through playing the game. And so the, the video game companies are now understanding the value of actors. Hopefully the actors will, will understand that, Hey, this is going to take a little bit of time yeah. because you're, you're coming, you're dealing with people who don't, who are just now starting to get on board into thinking the value of actors. Don't hit them too hard where all of a sudden you want like 10% of everything they make. Cause they're going to say, wait, no, no, <laughs> no. Wait, you know, what, what about, what about Chuck? He's been, you know, he's been working in the back room for 10 years. He, he's just getting, he just gets an hourly wage. It's, it's not right. No. So you've got to, you got to appreciate that and, and work slowly. So hopefully, you know, if, if we work together, if we, if the game, gaming companies and the actors work together, everybody's going to succeed. The games oh. are going to get better. They're going to make the gaming companies are going to make tens, uh, you know, tons of money. And uh, hopefully they'll, they'll start spreading, spreading the wealth a little bit to not only the actors, but also the other people that, that work so hard on the game. Cause yeah, it's actually what I said last week about it. I was like, there, you, people need to understand that this is a good thing. This is going to make uh, be better, yeah. actors, better, better voiceovers, better, everything, more quality games. And that's what you want. And because games don't just stop at graphics. I mean, you, the, the voices are, Oh, uh, but uh, it's yeah, it's so uh, Verlaine, you, anything else? We, I, I feel like we could talk to you for hours. Um, well, <laughs> speaking of, of video games, I'm I'm in a a new one that just came out. Oh, yeah, yeah. What do you got coming up? The uh, Fire Emblem, is it Heroes? War Warriors. Actually. Warriors. Fire yeah. Emblem Warriors. I am the the voice of the Black Knight now. Okay. And I, I somebody just had, had tweeted that that he heard that I was the Black Knight, and I'm also Rainer. And I said, well, be prepared for a kinder, gentler Black Knight. <laughs> Fair enough. I, I, but I, I doubt that. Actually, he's still still kind of tough. But uh, I'm I'm excited to be a part of that because I understand that uh, it's got a huge following. Oh, and yeah. This is one of the, the more beloved characters. And uh, hopefully I, I, I do him justice. That's cool. That's cool. Really, you got anything else? Yeah, actually. Okay. So... What would you have done mm -hmm. if voice acting and, and voice work in general didn't work out for you? What was your plan B? Because you had to have had one. Everybody has. If this doesn't work out, I'm going to be a teacher, a babysitter. <laughs> I, I'll, be honest, I'll be honest with you. There was no plan B. Really? I, all I or started nothing. Work, I, well, part of it is because I started working professionally when I was 15 years old. And literally... The first audition I went on, I booked. The third audition I went on, I booked. Wow. The fifth, the fifth audition I went on, I booked. So I started working right away. So knock on wood, uh, throughout these eight years <laughs> as a professional actor, no, it's been a long friggin' time. Uh, I've continued to work. And it's interesting that uh, um, I always wanted to do it as a kid. And of all the actors that were acting with me when I, when I was a kid, you know, even the professional actors, most of them are gone. There's maybe one guy that I see occasionally at auditions, commercial auditions, who's, who's still working, who actually started younger than, than I. He was like eight or nine wow. that was doing it. So uh, if I had to choose a, a, another career, it would have had been something with with entertainment because I I enjoyed it so much. It was a, a passion of mine. So either either writing or producing or or you know something along along those lines. But uh, you know, fortunately for me, or you know, unfortunately for for me, uh, I I got an, I got enough work 
that I didn't have to really make that decision as to should I give this up and do and do something else. I would, there was always something happening, and uh, I have found that now I'm actually having more fun doing what I'm doing than when I was 15, 16, 17 years old. How about that? And, and oh. it was a freaking party when I was 17 years old. Are you kidding it's, me? It's, it's never here too I, young to make a great childhood, right? I mean, here I, I was in high school. I was in high school. I had my own apartment. I bought a sports car. Uh, I, you know, I, I, it was, I went from the guy nobody noticed to like, wow, hey, you know, let's, let's hang out with him. So it was, I had, I had a lot of friends, you know, girls. I mean, all kinds of good stuff was happening. But I'm actually, honestly, it's more fun now because uh, along with it, I, I, I think I get, there's more appreciation for the opportunity. There's also more, um, you know, more things have happened in anyone's life where you have problems or difficulties or tragedies that happen that uh, you have to work through. And, and by working through them, again, it's, it's, it's appreciation for, for where you're at and having the opportunity. And to, you know, to play a character like Jim Rayner is not only is it exciting as an actor because you, I, you know, I get to live this guy, I get to live this experience that, and it takes years to do it. But, um, I've had, I can't tell you how many people have come up to me and told me how impactful that character was in their personal lives where they had a problem that they were dealing with or something happened in their lives. They didn't know what to do. And they would say to themselves, what would Rainer do? And I, I mean, I mean, it's like, I'm, I'm on the going, I go, shit, I don't, I don't know what he would do. I mean, <laughs> give me some lines. I'll tell you what he's going to do. But, but they found some strength in him, something that, that was able to get them through some tough times. Yeah. And this was, this, this is like icing on the cake. When some when somebody comes up to you, and I remember as a kid going up to, to voice actors because my father was a producer of uh, radio commercials. So I got to meet all these incredible people. And I remember how how impactful it was and how special it was when I was able to talk to them. Like, oh, but you're the voice of of Yosemite Sam. Oh, you're the voice of Porky Pig. Wow. And you and they would talk to Can you do the voice? And they would you do it. You'd, you'd go crazy. You'd pee yeah. in your pants because it was so exciting. <laughs> yeah. And I I remember that. And and also I remember. So you met uh, Mel Blanc? Is that what you're saying? Uh, oh yeah, I met Mel Blanc. I met June Foray. I mean, I mean Dawes Butler. I mean uh, Gary Owens. I mean, you name it. These uh, Jerry Stiller. You name it. They were all in in. They would come into the studio, and I would sit there and listen to these guys. And I, and my my uncle also taught me less. My uncle, uh, who I'm named after, was uh, very famous in his day. He he won a gold medal in in the uh, the Olympics in springboard diving. So he was really well known and he was on he would do television shows and people would come up to him ask for his autograph and he was always he would say a little bit embarrassed because he was a very humble guy and he would say you know that i was the best that day <laughs> if the if the finals had been the day before the day after i may not have won right. but that day i happened to be the best and he would say people that come up to you and ask you for that it should because it may not mean a whole lot to you but it means a lot to them. So respect that. And so I, I try to, and I do respect the, the fans, the people that enjoy the show, uh, whether it's Starcraft or ancient aliens or curse of Oak Island. Uh, it's, 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 I'm not going to be doing this forever. I mean, there's a, there'll be a time when, you know, you've, you've heard this, the different stages of, of an actor's career, that old joke. The first, the first one is who's Robert Clontworthy. Then the next one is, uh, let's give Robert Clotworthy a shot. The third one is, get me Robert Clotworthy. Then the fourth one is, we need a Robert Clotworthy type. Oh. And then, then it was, then the next one is, uh, whatever happened to Robert Clotworthy? And the last one is, who's Robert Clotworthy? It, it's, it's, it's like, it's, it's the beginning is the end. So, so whatever little uh, success or fame or influence or impact I have right now, I, I've got to appreciate it. It's, uh, you know, you know, it's, it's like the, uh, the herald that would stand behind Caesar when he came in after a, a great battle and the, in front of the cheering crowd and would say, this too shall pass because, you know, fame is, is, is fleeting. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta appreciate it. So, so I'm, I'm very, very thankful. And listen, I get to talk with you guys. How about I mean, if that? I were, 
if I was selling shoes, you guys wouldn't be calling me. Well, that's fair. If you were that's a fair. Gamer, we were, were a shoe podcast. And by the way, I have something in a loafer that I'd like to show you that I think would be <laughs> great with those slacks. Uh, Robert, <laughs> thank you so much uh, for joining us. Like like I said, I could talk to you for, for hours. Uh, my, my pleasure, guys. My pleasure. A lot of fun. Um, but, but real quick, you've been talking to us. We want you to talk to our listeners. Uh, mm -hmm. As Rainer, uh, what, what would you say to them uh, for, for listening to this? Uh, oh, God. oh, my God. See, I got, I got to write this down. I'm an actor that it's okay. like, right, got, yeah. got to, I've got to write this stuff down. So let's uh, let's say, what are the what are the bullet points that you want me to that you um, want Rainer to talk see. about? I, I want Rainer to really is what I want you to do is thank uh, thank our listeners for for listening to the interview. Okay. Uh, and and I, and I want you to do it any way you want, <laughs> really. So I, I, this is kind of improv. I want you to just go at it. Okay. Jim Rainer from. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. I'm just, all right, okay. Take two. Oh, yeah, take two. This is Jim Rayner from StarCraft, and I just want to say it's been a pleasure to be a part of this program. Raiders roll. See, that's great. See, okay, all simple, right. to, the point. simple yeah. to the point. I think I think they're going to love that. Thank you okay. so okay. much for being on the show, Robert. I, I We can't thank you enough. It was a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate this.